Hi there, it's me Kwe. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, nature of the 3D holographic universe, uh, how it's formed, the shape of the universe, and uh, how you move through it. So uh, buckle up buttercups, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. On this board it's going to show you the uh, nature of the holographic universe as presented by me Kwe Abelageo. Here we go. I'm going to walk in and out of the frame, so don't worry. First off, 3D is not what you think. Okay? 3D is actually a bunch of 2D images or information projected into a center square. Each of these 2D frames of information is on the outside and vertices of what's called a dodecahedron. That's a 12-sided object where the wave interference comes together of these projected images forms the illusion of 3D. Thing to remember, nothing really moves. You're watching this video right now and as you're watching this video you see me moving but you're not. You're seeing frames, right? It's the same concept. The information for the 3D holographic universe that you call reality or 3D space is actually just frames of information. Nothing in the universe move. You move through different universes, the multiverse. I'll show you how it works. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. First, the shape of the frame look like this. This is one flat side of a dodecahedron. On this is the info in 2D. Okay, the information that you see, like you're looking at me, you're looking at a 2D picture. It's got height and width, but no depth. Same thing. Now, up here is a representation of 12 of these. Of course, it's in the wrong shape, okay? It's in a square, because a dodecahedron would be just too complicated to try to draw on a whiteboard. Now, I used in this four colors for the, corn, for the cor corners and I did a wave pattern across where they intersect would make the object of say a ball okay like this now you're gonna have this times three okay which gives you three dimensions one of these sections is for one view. You got the height and the width and depth in your perception. Well, you get one dimension per four of these informational sites. Okay? Creates one dimension of interactability. Okay, so here we go. I talk about uh, you move through, the universe don't move at all the film you're viewing of me I'm not moving the frames individual video frames like on a film strip are moving create illusion of motion okay your awareness or your experience only thing that move everything else stationary and static now let's talk about superposition in quantum mechanics and in physics they have a problem and the problem is unless you observe something it's in all different kinds of places at once and that's true because until you perceive it it does not solidify into anything it's a mass of probability that's because it's not in a different place in this universe it's multiple universes and until you perceive it you don't pick which chain you work through like which frames Okay, I'll show you how that worked too. So here we go. Planck length. Planck length is equal to one frame. The smallest measurable thing. Here you go. In uh, here's the equation for the size of a Planck length. Okay. The smallest measurable amount of change or difference. As you see in the first square, I have a dot near the edge. 
right here. If I go one plank length, the particle moves a little bit this way. One more plank length, it moves to the center, okay? Because it's a very small, small square. But the particle moves, okay? But it's not really moving. Your perception is moving through this chain, okay? So, we go back to here, and we talked about this. You understand how that forms one side and the other side? Top and bottom, okay? That makes your ball. But yet, it's still not moving, is it? That just makes it in one location, static. The universe does not move. You move through universes, the frames. Each of these frames would be the same as a universe. The particle is stationary and non-moving. Your perception puts it together. Say this is that dot, is my finger, and it appears to move. Just like you're watching the 2D picture appear to move on your TV screen. Okay, so let's say, how does this work then? You say, well, if everything is fixed and nothing moves, how do you choose what you see? You choose what you perceive. That's called free will. You have free will to navigate and move in any direction with your awareness. Your intent and your energy is contained within a one-dimensional space, a stop. Now, when I talk about the universe, one of the mysteries is how can everywhere be the center of the universe? Well, it's pretty easy. You're the one dimensional dot at the center of your universe, your awareness. <coughs> so let's talk a little bit about some of the things that got a little backwards in physics. Speed of light. The speed of light is not the speed of light. Nothing moves, not the photons that make up light. What you're actually talking about is the speed of awareness, the speed of perception. The closer you get to the max speed of perception, the slower everything gets. That's why you say you can't go faster than the speed of light, but you can't go faster than the speed of awareness. For anything to move, you have to be aware, and then it puts it in a spot from superposition to position. Okay? Here is the speed of light in meters. And I say here, speed of light is zero, because it doesn't move. So I take this off, and I rename speed of awareness for the same calculation. Okay, so now we're going to go to this here. Time out. Time out. Here we go. That was uh, section one. I'm going to break this into sections. It's a lot to get your noodle around, yes? Okay? Nothing move. Let's start with that. How it's created, we leave it there. That is one universe, static. And why you're in the center of the universe, no matter where you are. In section two, we'll cover multiple universe. How uh, you choose your path through and how you can choose more than you think with your intent and your energy field. Remember, what you see and perceive is all electrical signals. The picture you're looking at in front of you, if I was standing in front of you, would not make a difference. If I touch you, still wouldn't make a difference. I'm not really in your brain, am I? I'm not in your head walking around. I am just your interpretation of that electronical signal in your brain through the synapses. We'll get more into that in, uh, I think that's section four, if I believe I, I got this number correctly. But anyway, namaste. And I see you soon. Section two, the multiple universe.